very much for joining us today and for attending today's AIM webinar. Uh, in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. My name is Nell Thompson and I'm the Secretary of the Australian Institute of Animal Management and I'll be hosting and, well, hopefully <laughs> handling all the tech business behind the scenes for you today. I've been on the AIM committee since 2013 and I'm also the coordinator of the National Getting to Zero program. The Australian Institute of Animal Management, or as we call it AIM, is the national peak body representing local government animal management officers. The AIM committee consists of a wide range of professionals engaged in the various aspects of animal management. AIM seeks to support those engaged in the business of animal management and the function itself by providing training and information, opportunities for networking and collaboration, and by encouraging the use of best practice policy and practices. AIM understands the significant pressures placed on local government and not-for-profit rescue and rehoming service providers when working in the companion animal management space. We welcome new members and people can join via our website at aim.org.au. So to our presentation for today, there'll be around 50 minutes of presentation time and 10 minutes of question time once the presentation has concluded. The recording of this webinar will be accessible via our website to all members to watch at any time. We're going to ask that everyone mutes themselves during the presentation. And if you have questions, you can start putting them in the Q&A section and we'll get through as many as we can at the end of the session. If you have quick questions that relate to your understanding of the content, put your hand up and we're happy to answer them during the presentation. If you have more questions or we don't get to yours during the question time, you can send us a message to our Facebook page and we'll get to it that way. As always, please excuse any working from home background noises that may filter through. I'm very pleased to introduce Vicky Davey as our presenter today. Vix is the co-founder of Pet Rescue. For almost two decades now, she's had her eyes firmly fixed on a future where every pet is safe, respected and loved. Her focus is on innovation in the animal welfare space, breaking down barriers to adoption and science-based solutions to animal welfare challenges. Fix builds collaborations in the wider community and runs programs that create genuine impact through raising awareness and creating change, transforming the lives of pets and people. Fix began her career in marketing but retrained as a behavioural dog trainer, working in shelters and pounds across three states before co-founding Pet Rescue. So let's get started. Over to you, Vix. Hi, thank you for the intro, Nell. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate that I am really happy to take um, questions during um, my talk. Um, I'm going to be today talking about rehoming pets direct to the community via Pet Rescue. We're going to look, I'm going to take you onto Pet Rescue to have a look at how to list pets and some of the, the best features and services that we have for councils. Um, and then at the end, I'd really like to have um, any questions and particularly around barriers to using our service. Um, and if we have time left over, I've got another little program that we've recently launched that I'm happy to have a chat that would, I think would be quite useful for a lot of councils as well. So let's get started. Um, also, I do notice that now I mentioned working from home. I am definitely working from home today. And I also have a sick daughter and my husband's working from home. So please forgive me if things don't quite go to plan, but let's get started. I love that. I say don't quite go to plan and the slide doesn't move. There we go. <laughs> now, please jump in and let me know if the slides aren't working properly. Um, so I thought we'd start with who is Pet Rescue? So Pet Rescue is a national animal welfare charity and um, our aim is to basically help vulnerable pets. So we're really focused in on shelters, rescues, council pounds and vets. These are the organisations that can become a Pet Rescue member and use our services. Um, we have around a thousand different member organisations who use our services and the thing that we're most well known for is our website. Um, Pet Rescue has been around 18 years and if for those of you who can actually remember back that far, which I struggle to these days, 
um, it was before social media existed and digital cameras weren't on our telephones. One of the first things we had to do when we started Pet Rescue and asked rescue organisations to start listing pets for adoption was to actually find a sponsor to provide 2.5 megapixel digital cameras for them. Um, we've come a long way since then and things have massively changed. Um, at the time, as uh, Nell mentioned, I was working in advertising and marketing, but I had started studying um, dog behaviour, and I was also doing a course in um, shelter dog management and rehabilitation, and this was out at a RSPCA that was also the local council pound in um, Victoria. And it was back in those days, the terrible old days, where they had the 28-day rule, where animals would be euthanised if they weren't adopted after 28 days. And Myself and my co-founders had seen these beautiful pets in the pound that people just didn't know they existed. And we thought, well, if we could become the pet shop window for rescue pets and shelter animals, then perhaps we could get one or two adopted. And in the first year after launching the website, we helped rehome 527 pets. And we were like, oh my God, woohoo! And now 18 years on, it's around 60,000 every year on average. So things have massively changed. And Pet Rescue itself has grown. Um, we are a ACNC registered charity um, and we're fully audited by the ACNC. Um, we've become a trusted name in pet adoption. So when people think of where should I adopt a pet, they do think of doing a search for Pet Rescue. We've also grown to provide programs and services to our members that are much further than just the website. We do lots of adoption campaigning, um, special needs programs, we do food donations, we do all sorts of things, but we're really going to focus in on the website today. Um, and everything we do is free for all our members, which is the worst business model ever invented. But it means that for councils, there's no financial concern around it. Everything we do for members is completely free. And PetRescue.com.au, the website, um, we've built this from the ground up and it's become a world-class a world platform. Um, we are the most visited charity website in Australia and we're the most successful adoption platform in the Southern Hemisphere. And it's been built specifically for Australia. It's been built for council pounds, it's been built for shelters, rescue groups and vets. So everything on it works with us. We're not trying to use um, software from another, another country, basically. And we're really proud of the, the website. Um, we see the website sees 25,000 to between 25,000 and 30,000 visitors every single day. Now that is a lot of people coming to a website to look to adopt a pet. Um, around 750,000 pets have been adopted via Pet Rescue since we've been going. And on average, it takes 5.3 days for a, one of our council members to rehome a pet. So that means by the, when they list the pet on Pet Rescue and then when they mark the pet as adopted, the average time is 5.3 days. Now, the reason these numbers are really important is because even though it is fantastic to list pets on your own council website and great to use Facebook or your social media, but those um, people who are viewing your pets are within your existing circle. So they already know you exist. They know that pets are available through your council. What Pet Rescue does is it expands that circle and reaching a new groups of people who have never really thought about adopting through a council pound or don't know about your particular area um, is a great way just to extend the amount of people who are potential adopters for pets. So why rehome directly? Um, my talk today is about is focused on rehoming directly to the community, but I know that many of you will already have relationships with rescue groups, and a lot of you will be using those groups to help rehome pets. But I think there's some really important reasons for rehoming directly. So. If you're in New South Wales, you know that the new legislation requirements mean that you need to list your pets publicly. And yes, you can do that on your own website or on Facebook, but the community really want to see this legislation work and they want to see that it's not just a tick, ticking the box exercise. And by using multiple strategies, by looking at different strategies for different pets, um, and just adding pet rescue into your toolbox, you're really showing the community that you are engaged in this process of rehoming re pets and that you're actively seeking to lower euthanasia. 
And I think you can't underestimate the positive impact that rehoming pets directly has on your staff and community. So with staff being seeing either pets being euthanized or just going off into rescue and not really hearing of them again, it can be quite um, demoralizing. It becomes this sort of churn and burn. And I think the feedback that we have from pounds, and I know when I've been working in um, shelters and pounds myself, that being able to actually see that pet go to a, a home really makes you feel like you're achieving something and, and it helps you keep on keeping on with your job. And I'm sure many of you know this and feel this way. We've also had really positive um, community, when the community see you making this effort, the community get behind you and support you more as well, which is a, another sideline for this. Um, oops, sorry. Just trying to ruin the slideshow, sorry. <laughs> um, I think one of the most important things for direct rehoming as well is working in collaboration with rescue. So rather than just sort of passing the burden of pets from your organization onto a rescue organization, and we know that rescue organizations, particularly in New South Wales, are at capacity at the moment. And what we're already hearing is that the rescue organizations that are now taking on more pound pets um, are saying no to surrenders. And the surrenders then don't have anywhere to go. So the owner surrenders are now ending up going directly to the pound. So it's the same amount of animals in the system. They're just sort of shifting around where they're going in. So by working alongside the rescue and rehoming directly yourself, even if it's one or two pets or half the pets that you have coming in and rehoming those, those are going out of that system straight away. And then the pets that really need help from a rescue, the ones that maybe have more behavioral, need more behavioral support or medical support, or even just ones that are taking longer to rehome, they can be passed on from your pound to the rescue group. And we've already sort of removed some of the pets. So it's much more working in collaboration. Um, this is a quote from Maneki Neko Cat Rescue, which I'll read for you. As a rescue group, our role is to step in where an animal is not able to cope in a shelter environment or that has ongoing specialist needs that require intervention before being rehomed. With pounds directly rehoming suitable healthy pets, that enables rescues to focus our extremely limited resources on caring for the most needy and vulnerable. By working together in this way, we can ensure all animals get the care that they need. And I think that's a really powerful statement from a group who work very closely with their local pounds. So the website, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, there's definitely two sides to the website and um, what you have most likely seen so far, if you're not already a pet, re pet rescue member, is what the members of the public see. Um, now, most members of the public come to pet rescue and they start doing a search for a pet. And the example I've just got running beside me is a search for a dog. Um, they can use all sorts of filters. They can use filters for um, location, looking for a pet near them. They can look for, the, obviously, the species of the pet, the size of the pet. They can look to see if they're good with other pets, cats, dogs, if they're good with children, how they do being at home alone, all of those sort of filters. And the person will do a search and hopefully find a pet that they're interested in and then hit the inquire about the pet button. Um, I'm specifically showing the mobile version of this on this slide because 70% of website visitors are using mobile. And most often they're sitting down after dinner, we can see when they're using the site, um, and starting to search. Sitting on the couch, watching TV, searching for pets is obviously a very common thing happening. Um, they can't search by breed. So this is something that Pet Rescue has always had from the, the time that we started with the belief that breed doesn't really tell you much about a pet's personality. We want to force people to look at individual pets rather than have a preconceived idea. So they don't come to Pet Rescue and go, oh, I want a chocolate Labrador and search for chocolate Labrador. They'll search for medium-sized dog. And we know time after time, we have great stories about people coming in to look at for a specific pet that they had in mind and then adopting something looks completely different, but absolutely falling in love with them. But as a um, member of Pet Rescue, so on the other side of Pet Rescue, um, there's a different, different side, which I'll show you. So first of all, um, when you first sign up to become a member, of Pet Rescue, there's a membership application. Now, as a council pound, we 
check and approve your application. And we can do that pretty quickly. We just check to make sure that the person applying is actually a member of the, of the council. Um, and we make sure that it's a, a genuine council. If you are a rescue organisation, for example, say a foster group, um, they would also have to have a vet reference and provide the ABN. So we, we do a check to make sure that the genuine organisation is genuinely rehoming pets. Once you've created your account, this is an example just scrolling through of Port Macquarie's account page. So as you can see, it has the pets that they have available for listing. It has a bit of information about their animal shelter and their location. You can choose to have your location in or out. Um, you don't have to display it if you don't want people coming to your location. Um, the, the great thing about this is it, it's in the account directory, sorry, the rescue directory, which some people like to search through to find rescue organizations that are close to them but it also appears on Google search results. So say if I was looking to adopt a cat in Port Macquarie and I typed in cat adoption Port Macquarie, the pet rescue page, account page for Port Macquarie would pop up in the Google search results on the first page. So it's another way of um, uh, the community finding that you are rehoming pets. All right, now um, I'm going to switch over to the actual website so that you can see how to list a pet. And as soon as you remember, you can start listing pets automatically. Um, so now let me know if I don't, you can't see the site. Well, actually, let me know if you can see it. Yep, all good. Perfect, excellent. So just, I'm going to take you through listing a pet really quickly. Um, just to let you know, I'm actually on the staging site. So you can see at the top there, there's a big yellow um, bar that says staging. Now, this is um, when you have a website, a big web website like Pet Rescue, there's actually two mirrored websites. One of them is called staging and one of them is called production. And production is the website that if the public use and see. Staging is the website that we develop on and um, play around on and then put it over to production. So the reason I'm using staging is so that we can have a play around without actually creating issues with the real genuine data. And also just to let you know, um, I have got my team to set up some fake accounts and information on this so that I can show it all to you and we can have this recorded and we're not invading anyone's privacy and we're keeping, with, um, keeping our data clean and not worrying anyone's privacy basically. The rescue group that I am going to show you through, which would be your council name, but mine is called Pet Rescue Official. So just to explain what you're going to be seeing. So when you have logged in as a member, you get this big um, gray bar across here. Um, so the public can't see that, it's just you. And it has everything you need on it. So I'm going to jump straight into add a pet listing. Hopefully not too many members of my family are using the internet right now so that I don't have a problem. Excellent. So please just let me know if there's any issues and because uh, I obviously I can't see what you see. So we're going to just list a pet really quickly so I can go through some of the features and why um, pet rescue is quick and easy for pet listings. Um, we start off with the listing owner. So that's the member of the group who is actually listing it. And that's me, Vix Davy. So I'm going to list my pet and my pet's name is Floyd. Um, the best feature about Floyd, now the best feature shows up on the search results. So it's the first thing people see as long, along with the photo. So if there's something that you can pull out that makes that pet special or more interesting to adopters, it's a really great place to put that. So I'm going to say he is great with cats. Um, Floyd's personality. Now I've, this is where you say a little bit about the pet and it's really great to do a positive profile. So something that is, um, that you can pull out that is, you know, super lovely about the pet. Now you don't need to sit here and write, oh, he needs loads of exercise and he's very, very, you know, active. You can turn that around and say, you know, would really suit a family who loves to go running. So that kind of side of it. Now, because I don't want you all to have to suffer through my terrible typing. I'm going to cut and paste the personality into here. Um, so this is all about my little Floydy. Um, and I'll just fix that one. Oh, there we go. Um, then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to choose what species he is. And as I said about the smart formatting before, depending on what I choose here, depends on what will be offered for me next on my listing. So Floyd is a dog. And 
This brings up breeds. Now, as far as breeds are concerned, we've pretty much got every breed listed here. But knowing that most of the dogs coming in are going to be similar breeds, or um, we're not often going to have a Basset Hound, for example, um, you can just start typing. And one of the great things, um, one of the breeds that we include is actually mixed breed. So if I start typing mixed, and my internet stays working, um, it pops up mixed or mixed breed. So I can just say, hey, look, Floyd's a mixed breed. I don't really know what's in him. Or I could say, look, I can pretty much see that Floyd has got some staffy in him. Um, and we've got staffy down here. So we even have the nickname because that's what people use. And I might say, hey, well, Floyd is a staffy, but he's obviously got Airedale in him as well. So I can choose multiple breeds. And at the, over there on the other side here as well, there's a little tick box for mixed. So if I think Floyd is multiple breeds, not just Staffy Neardale, I can just tick mixed here. And you can see by this green writing here, this is the display of what will appear on his actual set, search results. So Floyd's a Staffy Airedale mix. Um, Floyd is male. I'll pop in his age. I'm going to say he is six. If you had the birth date of the pet, you can actually use the calendar over here as well to put the birth date in. So that might be if you've got a litter of kittens that were born in the in the pound or other animals where you have specific information around them. And this actually updates as your pet is listed on the site. So if they're listed for a while, particularly if they're really little um, and, and the age uh, getting older is important, it will automatically update. Um, I can decide if Floyd tick the box if he's a senior pet. Um, with senior pets, the pet will still appear in the overall search um, results. So if someone's just looking for dog, he'll appear in the main dog things, but he would also appear in a senior search. And a lot of people actually are looking for senior animals, particularly older people. I can choose if you've got a foster program running, I can choose to say that this pet is listed for looking for foster care as well. And we get people who go onto the site just to search for pets that are available for foster care because they want to become foster carers. Um, I'm going to choose Floyd's size as medium. Um, I'm going to say all pets listed on Pet Rescue have to be desexed. Um, so I'm going to list him as desexed. He's also vaccinated, he's wormed, and he hasn't had any heartworm prevention that I know of. Medical notes, so this is where you would pop anything like um, allergies, heart murmur, three legs, anything that you know about the pet that's a medical um, thing that you need the adopters to know. I'm gonna put in that he is 100% healthy. Um, then the adoption details, now this does, probably as a council facility, you're probably always going to be in the same location. But if you did have foster carers who were more spread out, for example, um, this is where you put in the suburb that the pets uh, is in. So when people are doing searches for in like a 50k radius or near their homes, they can find this pet is available there. So I'm going to put in that Floyd is in, he is in Altona North in Victoria. And then I can choose whether my pet is available for interstate adoption. Now, this is a really important one. I'm going to talk about it a bit more later on. But choosing the widest area that you can advertise your pet is the best way to go. I'm going to say Floyd is also available in the Northern Territory and WA. You might um, choose some, uh, suburbs, sorry, states that are just near you, just the state over from you, or you might choose the whole of Australia, but you can choose where you are happy for your pets to be rehomed to. You select your own adoption fee, so whatever your standard fee is, you can pop in here. I'm going to say Floyd is $500. Here we have um, a way to remove your pet from certain searches. So if you think that you, you know that the dog isn't great with other dogs, you can say, hey, we don't want other residential dogs, resident, sorry, dogs in the homes. And it's just a way of excluding them from searches. It doesn't mean that people with dogs, uh, a dog won't apply because they may not search in that way, but it just gives you a bit, the um, adopters a bit more information about the type of home that would be suitable for that pet. Um, this box is about your what you would like the potential adopters to do, how you would like them to contact you. Um, with this one, we've already put in inquire about this pet on the button, which I will show you in two seconds. Um, now, 
this is the information that is different for every state. So you know that, that obviously there's different rules for each state and territory about the type of identification numbers that the pets need. So I'm just going to pop in a microchip number that I have spied earlier. We have smart formatting on this so that if people are putting in fake microchip numbers, like 000, 12345, it will actually pull them up on that. So I'm going to use a real microchip number. And because my pet is listed in Victoria, I also need a source code. Now, automatically, as you decide what states that your pet is available in, the website will put um, in the fields for a source number or if it's a breeder ID or whatever the state needs. So I really recommend, regardless of where you are as a council facility, if you get those numbers, just spend half an hour and get yourself a number for each um, state that needs it. It means you can completely open up your adoptions. Now I'm going to pop in a source number. And I can choose which contact details to, to get in contact with me. The, uh, my own details, because I'm a member of this group, or I can use, I can switch over here to use my group's details, which is probably more likely if you're a council, your details are probably always going to be the same, or you can customize the details. So if you wanted um, inquiries to go specifically to um, maybe a foster carer, then you can customize those. So I'm just gonna use my details and my preferred contact is going to be via email. And then I'm going to create this listing. And now I get to add the photos. So obviously really important to have a great photo of pets that you're listing so that people, they stand out in the search results and people are sort of attracted to those pets. It's really simple to do. I'm going to pop on a photo of Floyd. And you can edit and, and shift your photos around here. So I'm just going to click on this box. And grab, drag and drop a picture of Floyd. And here he is looking beautiful. And then I'll add a, another photo just so I can demonstrate moving the photos around. And there's Floyd. So I can move these two photos, which whichever I think is the best photo, because that's the one that's going to show up on the search results when people are first looking. So I can just drag and drop them, shift them over there. And then I think, oh, no, I think the photo of Floydy running along is a much better photo. So I'm going to pop that there. And then I go and go back to edit. Now you can add videos in the exact same way. And it's great if you do have a video because that really helps people looking to adopt to get a, a feel of the pet. So um, chasing a ball if it's a dog or just having a bit of a patch if it's a cat, but any kind of video can really, really help. And then I'm happy I check back through my listings and I think, yep, this is definitely a great listing for Floyd, update listing. And that will automatically then place it onto the site. And I'm just scroll down. So there's my listing. Now I'm looking at, again, the members view of this listing. So the public will see it without the edit photos and without all the tools. And I'm just going to show you through a couple of these tools now. Here. As you can see, the first bit at the top here is about my group. So remembering that my group that I'm using at the moment is called Pet Rescue Official. Um, Pet Rescue Official has uh, listed 45 pets. We've had 27,000 views of those pets, 90 inquiries via the site, and 22 pets adopted. The information directly under here in this gray box is the information specifically about Floyd, the dog that I've just listed. And I can see the information, I'll see how many views he gets, how many people are looking at his profile when he gets inquiries. And I have the ability to use some tools that are just in the middle here. I can edit his um, profile. And a really great time-saving tool here is to clone his profile, which means basically make another copy of the same profile. And I would be using this specifically if I had a litter of kittens to, that are all you know, similar, obviously they're the same age, 
um, just so I don't have to keep on entering the same information, but that's so I can meet the legal requirements of advertising with um, individual microchips, etc. So that's basically listing a pet. So that pet's already up and um, people would be able to see his profile. Now I'm just going to jump back to my uh, presentation. Hopefully you can all see that. I've just got a quote here from um, one of our more recent members, Port Macquarie Animal Shelter. So they are the council animal shelter. Um, what Pet Rescue has done is reduce the barriers to adoption, including for us, it's free. We've been able to rehome pets to people living several hours away. Some have even been rehomed interstate. Pet Rescue gives our pets a platform where they are visible, connecting them to literally thousands of people, meaning they have a much better chance of finding a home. It takes just a few minutes to create a listing and we get inquiries straight away. Everyone on the team is thrilled with the success and the community are really supportive in getting behind this too. So the next part of the site that I want to show you through um, is something that makes us very different from other platforms that you might use. And it's the inquiry management system. Now this is called conversations and it's where you can have a conversation with an online conversation with potential adopters. They can come and talk to you about the pet. It's safe and secure and you find out more information about the person um, who is inquiring about the pet. So I'm going to just jump back to the site and show you through this one. So again, and please do jump in with any questions because I know I'm talking quite quickly and running through as quick as I can. <laughs> um, so jumping back up to this bar here, this gray bar at the top, um, we can find um, manage my pets and my pet inquiries. And there's two different ways to jump in and find inquiries. Um, if you go in through my pet inquiries, this is listing pets that are um, in your group and all the various inquiries about them. So I've got two other pets listed on my and my group, which is Kobe and Leafy Linda. So obviously, again, this is the staging site. Leafy Linda is just a test pet for pet rescue, not a real pet being advertised. Um, and if I want to jump in to find out about lovely Kobe here. And I can see um, this is a inquiry for, for Kobe from Tina. And again, reminding you that Tina is actually a member of my team, so I'm not sharing other people's data. I've set up for my account an autoresponder, which means that every time someone inquires via the site, the first time they inquire, they'll get this message back just to give my team time to be able to answer inquiry. So it says, thank you for your inquiry. We're currently working hard behind the scenes, reviewing and processing. So that means when Tina here has um, sent her inquiry, she feels that it's gone somewhere, that it's heard. But then I can um, write a message to Tina and say, oh, thanks, Tina. Um, I'd love to have a chat. Excuse my terrible typing, everyone. Chat. And please call. And I can give my phone number one here. So I can have a conversation with Tina um, without having to um, give her a call or without have her having to call um, the council directly in the first instance. Now, why this is important, I'm actually just going to jump back and show you another um, inquiry for Kobe. Go through this way. So now I'm in Kobe's profile and I'm just going to jump directly to his conversation. So rather than having all the conversations for other pets that I've listed, I can see Kobe's ones directly. Um, one of the great things about using conversations is that you actually get more information around the person who has, has emailed you. So again, we'll jump into Kobe and this one is by Emily. And here on the left hand side, I can actually view Emily's profile. So I can see that she has provided a profile that she has two adults in her family, in her household. She has no children. She has a um, medium female dog, Rosie, here. 
and then she can give me some more information about herself and about her household. Now, the reason that's really useful is it means that you're able to um, sort of exclude, I guess, pets, uh, people that may not be appropriate at this point. And so it's quite a time saving um, area. So say if my, uh, if Kobe wasn't great with other pets, I'd know immediately that Rosie, um, sorry, Emily having this, her dog Rosie, she's not going to be appropriate. So I could let her know straight away. Um, one of the other um, really great things about conversations is the bulk messaging. So I'm just going to show you that as well. I'm just going to jump back into manage my pets. So again, if I wanted to um, update Kobe, I'm just going to talk into him. And I've found, I've had uh, three inquiries for Kobe already, and I feel like that's enough for him. And I'm going to change his status. So at the moment, he's listed on the pet as, a, on the pet, on the website, sorry, as available for adoption. But I can jump in here and I can say, well, I'm going to put him on hold. So he's removed from the search results so that I can look through or contact his applications. I'm going to give a reason for that. I'm reviewing applications and I'm going to update his status. Now, this is an absolutely awesome feature. Um, it's been really, really um, loved by our members because I can email every, every person who has inquired about Kobe at the same time. I can update, I can change the information and say, hey, you know, Kobe's I'm reviewing applications or any personalized message. But these will be sent to every inquirer about Kobe. So I only have to... Um, stay in touch with, I guess, the one inquirer that I'm choosing and can bulk message everyone else. So I'm just going to send that. Oops. Um, this is a really great time-saving feature. And I know that many of you councils um, prefer to have people call or the way you're set up is to have people come in. But using the conversations means that you're not losing these people. If someone's on their couch in the, after, in the evening, watching TV, looking through and see Kobe, think, I really am interested in that pet, they can instantly send a inquiry. And it means that that information i've got that information i've got their details and i can follow up whereas if i've said i'm only open between you know nine and four and you can only um, call between these certain hours you're more likely to lose um, potential adopters so it's really great if you can use the conversations as your first port of call okay so some of the time saving features that are on pet rescue um, we've got marked as read. So once you've looked at the uh, any conversation, it will automatically say that you've read that one. We've got the bulk messaging I just mentioned, auto responders. So as I said, you can set up a response so that you're automatically saying, hey, thanks for contacting us. We'll get in chat and contact back with you so soon. Um, you can also clone the um, the profiles, as I said, particularly great with litters of kittens or very similar pets coming in. And you can bump listings. Now, bumping a listing means that you can pop it back up every seven days. You can hit the bump and you can pop it back up to the top of the search results. So that with all the pets being listed every day on Pet Rescue, they don't get lost. If your pet's still available, you can bump them back up to the top so more people can see them. So I think those are probably the main time-saving features that are on the, the website. Um, and then one of the other really important features, and I think particularly for councils, is the way that you can manage the members of your group. So we can jump, I'll actually show this live again. Um, there are two types of members. There are group admin and group members. So when you open your, when you, oops, sorry, my team members over here. So once you've started your account, you can add members to that account. And you can have a group admin has full access to control the your council's account on Pet Rescue. So they can change the and update the council's profile page. They can create new users. They can remove and suspend users. They can edit all of the pets listed. So they have full control over everything. Whereas a group member um, has 
only control over their own pets that they're listing. So they can list pets, they can edit the pets that they have listed, and they can respond to inquiries for the pets that they have listed, but they can't um, edit other people's pets. Now, this is important. So if you have volunteers, for example, who are doing your pet listings, or if you have team members who leave or team members who are sick, and you need to be able to um, access their listings, group admin can do that. Or if you want to remove people um, to not have access on your, on your account anymore, to, um, group admin has full control over that. So it just gives you more security over people being able to access the council's account on Pet Rescue. Now, this all may sound like a lot, and I know I've kind of raced through stuff, I actually don't have my timer running anymore after the um, after the internet problems. So hopefully we're about halfway through. Now you can give me a wave if I'm talking too much. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot of features on Pet Rescue. And there's a lot more that I haven't shown you. And if it sounds like a lot, and if your team aren't particularly computer savvy, don't worry. It's really really intuitive, and we've set it up that way. So for people who aren't particularly computer savvy. Um, it steps you through really quickly and easily, and a lot of it happens automatically as well. So once you have listed a pet, you would expect to receive inquiries pretty quickly. Um, but there's some ways of getting the inquiries much faster or making your pet stand out more. And as I mentioned before, one of the big ones is photos. Having a good photo to have your pet stand out on those search results is really important. And this can be really hard in a council facility. Um, we've got some great information on actually how to take great pet photos on the website and the um, uh, member resources. But one of the important things for dogs is to take them out of the kennels. If you even just have a plain brick wall, if you can get them out into onto grass with a tree behind them, that's even better. But get them away from the kennels so you've got better lighting and they look more positive. With cats, cats are always really difficult. So I always recommend getting two um, people involved in taking the photo, one to wave a toy in front of the cage to hopefully get that face to look at you and one taking the photo. And again, avoid those photos where they're in the litter tray or they're at the back of the, in the corner in the dark and just try to get a picture where that pet is looking, looking happier or looking interested. Positive profile, I also mentioned, um, really looking at thinking from the person who is likely to adopt your pet. So who are they? Are they a person with a family? Are they a single? Are they, you know, flatting together? And write your profile um, for that person, not writing the profile of all the negatives of the pet that you have seen, um, because remembering they're going to be very different in a shelter than they are in a home. Um, use the inquire about us button, inquire about the pet button. So this is the button, I've got the green button here that's on the profile. So choosing to use, ask potential adopters to use that is really important. It just means you don't lose that person who is thinking about, thinking about inquiring by making them go too far, as I said. Um, you can always have as your response, your auto response saying, hey, please give us a call or better to have a first communication and then ask for them to call or come in. Um, and also mark them as available for interstate adoption. Now, I know um, people tend to, particular councils sort of tend to say, oh, no, we'll just adopt in our own area. But actually interstate adoption and long distance adoption is really successful. I remember... Um, right at the beginning of Pet Rescue, so probably 15 years ago, and we first sort of opened up to interstate adoption, we had this big black sort of mixed breed dog in a council pound in Sydney and just no interest whatsoever in him. And lovely dog, but just nobody wanted a big black mixed breed there. And he had an inquiry from Magnetic Island in Queensland. And so we all pulled together to help get this dog to Queensland. And we had volunteer transporters get him to the airport. The adopters paid for the flight. He had to go on a ferry to get to Magnetic Island. And the adopters sent me back this picture of this dog. Honestly, he was like lounging by the pool and living in this mansion. And I just thought, God, I wish that adopted me. But 
just thinking of the fate that that dog had compared to what happened just because they said, yeah, we'll let him be adopted interstate. We've also just in the last month or so had a um, family who adopted a border collie that was a thousand kilometers away from them. And they, um, the rescue organization held the dog for them for, until the school holidays. And they drove all the way and picked them up and drove all the way home. And having, you know, the dog is absolutely perfect for them. And we've had one really recently um, which is a bit closer to home with some um, pet rescue, friends of pet rescue, JB and Mel, who had lost their own dog, had passed away just recently. And this, they saw this guy in a council pound in the ACT. And he'd been there for two months and again, no, no interest in him whatsoever. And um, Mel and JB got a rescue group to do some cat testing and to help them out to make sure that Ruckus, this beautiful dog, was going to be a, a, good, a good fit for them. And then they also helped with transport, drove him to the airport and he flew from the ACT to Perth. And as you can see by this photo, he is already very much loved. We also have um, world-class safety and security and we really pride ourselves on this. Um, we know that councils are really risk adverse as they should be. Um, so Pet Rescue is very different than other platforms that are available. We uh, meet all the online compliance and privacy regulations. We have the legal requirements for listing. So as we've talked about the source numbers, microchip, all of those are in the smart formatting to wherever you're listing, you need to have the right information legally. We have the ability to ban abusive or offensive inquiries. So if you're getting emails from people who are being offensive to your staff or abusive, we can ban them so that they can't, um, their email won't go through to your organization. We can actually give them a global ban on the website as well so they can't contact any of our organizations. Um, we have automated image moderation. Now what this means is it's basically clever AI that looks at the images and makes sure there's nothing offensive going up. When we say offensive, what I'm thinking is people putting up nude photos, that kind of thing, that can't be done on the site. So you know that the other um, organizations that are also pet rescue members um, are showing their best. They're a professional bunch and, we're, and sit really nicely alongside the council pounds. Um, Control of role types, this is what we talked about, the user types. So the council has full control over who is actually has access to their account. And history logs. So every time someone logs onto your account and makes any kind of change, there's a, a history log created. And you can go back and see that. So you can see, oh, yep, Jenny logged on and changed the age of Fluffy the kitten. Um, but everything, all that, all that information is kept there as a historical reference. So if there was any issues that you had internally, you can go back and have a look at what's happened on the site. But I think the most important thing about being a pet rescue member and the difference about pet rescue is that we're not just a listing site. So yes, we are an amazing listing platform that reaches thousands of people every single day. Um, but we're a team and we give personalized support and onboarding so we can help you directly, your staff or anyone who needs to contact Pet Rescue. We have a member support person, Bella, who is there answering your questions and always happy to pick up the phone or have a Zoom with you. Um, you have access to our member help desk. So rather than just an email going to the general emails that everyone else emails through, we have a specialized email for our members and the, which is checked and reviewed every day to make sure that we are right on top of anything that you might need. Our team can also help with boosting pets. So you don't just need to list and leave them. This is one we've just helped with um, one of the council pounds that didn't have any inquiries. So after three months, we did a whole bunch of different promotions for this dog, Marley, and Marley ended up within a week, ended up with 10 really great applications. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna zip through and I've got some testimonials and quotes, which I can share. I can share this out with everyone afterwards, but just uh, talking about some uh, shelters that are really happy to use us and particularly around the costs that we've lowered the costs because the animals are getting out quicker. And um, I want to hear questions and around the barriers that we might have and some of the great solutions we've had around barriers. So now do you want to read out some questions for me? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So Pats did answer a couple for us within oh, the goodness. chat. Um, 
I know you were going to talk about um, the one-on-one -on -one training available. And also I wondered if you just wanted to mention or quickly uh, overview the integrated web feed. Ah, yes. Um, so with the integrated web feed, if you are using um, Shelter Manager or Shelter Buddy, um, we can integrate so that we're um, the, taking the information from those two um, platforms and it can feed straight into Pet Rescue and show your pets for adoption. Or we can actually do it the other way where you can list your pets on Pet Rescue and we can set it up or help you set it up so that they then um, automatically feed onto your own website using the, um, the technology from Pet Rescue. It looks like your website and your pets, but it's using Pet Rescue, which is a really great way of um, saving time. So you're not multiply listing pets on different websites. And so you don't need to have shelter manager or shelter buddy to do that side of things. If you're doing it in that direction, yeah. Yep. So yeah. So if you're going for pet rescue first and then pushing them over to your site, yeah, you don't need to be shelter manager or shelter buddy. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, one-on-one -on -one training. Tell us about that. Um, so we can organize, I'll just stop sharing. Um, we can organize um just contact us and we can set up a time to run a Zoom with one-on-one -on -one training with your team. Um, our uh, member support person, Bella, is always happy to do that. So it's just a matter of contacting us directly at members at petrescue.org.au. We can sort that out for you. Fantastic. So, um, I, I mean, I'd really like to hear too, we've, we've covered, it's free, it's incredibly easy by the looks of things, it's quick. Um, why you know what are any barriers is anybody here thinking oh i'd really like to but or you know is anybody having thoughts like that because now's the time we've got vix here um you know let, let's ask her whatever those questions are uh, obviously you can also contact the team and mm -hmm. you know have those conversations privately but um i mean certainly from you know, from the outside looking in, you think, well, this is just a fantastic opportunity, which it always has been, you know, I mean, when Pet Rescue has really changed the space of, um, of rehoming pets, um, for, old, for those of us old enough to have been around <laughs> for the journey of Pet Rescue, um, it's done amazing things. So to now be able to do that for council um, and to help keep those pets within the community, that they come from um, and really provide that service for the community. I think um, it couldn't be any easier. So it just, it's fantastic. Is if, if, please jump in with questions, but I'll just let you know a couple of barriers that I know that we, we've helped overcome. It's one of the things we're really interested in doing. And there's been some barriers around councils who aren't desexing their pets. And obviously they need to be desexed. But one example, we had, and this was a few years ago, but we had a council who couldn't desex and couldn't take money, couldn't take payments over the counter at the pound. And so what we organised and we helped set up with their local vet is a standard desexing price for dogs and cats. And when someone would come to the pound, they would fall in love with the pet and they would be sent to the vet. They would go and pay the vet the desexing price. They'd get the receipt and they would take that back to the council and that was their ticket to get the pet. Fantastic. There's always ways around it. We also have... Mm -hmm. um, when the desexing is an issue as well, is just start with one pet. Start with the pet that is desex that comes into your pound. List them and move from there. I mean, Port Macquarie is a great example where they started with one pet. And since that, in the last couple of years, they've built up a whole adoption program using Pet Rescue. Fantastic. That's excellent. I've got one question coming here. We use Shelter Buddy, so I'm interested in the automatic web updates. If we advertise animals for adoption that are in the care of our foster carers, can we make the main point of contact the foster carer or will it default to the shelter contact details? I'm pretty sure if you're using Shelter Buddy and, and you use the feed, it will default back to whatever Shelter Buddy is listing. And perhaps you can jump in if, um, if you want to add something to that. If you're manually using Pet Rescue the way I just showed you, listing pets, then you can have all the different contacts. But I believe if it's shelter buddy, it just takes over everything on that one. 
Yeah. Okay, that makes sense because it's it's two systems integrating. Yeah, really, and yeah, and Shelter Buddy would be the main system in that that one changing up every time it updated, it would update on Pet Rescue. Um, okay. And another yeah. problem solving one, if we don't have another question yet, um, a lot of people find it difficult to find the time to write profiles. We had a mm. really great organization that was um, had a, we found a volunteer profile writer for them who was in Tasmania, but the rescue organization was in New South Wales. And they just sent a couple of dot points about each pet or would ring and say something. And the um, person writing the profile never met the pets, but did beautiful profiles. And it was a really great, great way of working together. Um, so, yeah, so we don't need to have volunteers coming into your, your council. We can actually have volunteers in other areas. So many solutions, so many opportunities. I mean, it really just is opening up a, a ton of opportunities. Well, look, I think we will leave you to your afternoon, Vicky. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone for attending. Um, I'm excited that we've got this, this session done because, um, you know, we, we're really wanting to see a lot of councils jumping on board. Um, AIM are uh, very supportive of this, uh, of, you know, rehoming directly and of using Pet Rescue. So please, everybody, you know, take the opportunity that's been presented. Um, stay tuned to our e-news and social media for upcoming webinars and um, feel free to contact us with suggestions for speakers or topics um, if you would like to see something covered in this webinar series we're open to suggestions so um, we've got some comments here thank you yep great problem solving vix i uh, wish you were coming to the rangers conference in july <laughs> in new south wales mm -hmm. uh, a great opportunity to get ahead of kitten season and ain't that the truth all right thank you everybody i really appreciate your time thanks so much vicky it was a struggle for you at times but i really Sorry. appreciate you hanging in there um no don't um it was really well worth your time from our perspective. So thank you so much and um, talk to you all soon. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, everybody.